I feel like I'm managing a football team and we're just past mid-season or maybe late season and most of the team is on injured reserve or is it the disabled list or is it PUP, PUP list, physically unable to perform. There's all kinds of names for it. I don't, I don't even know what the current name is, but all I know is I have a lot of stuff to repair. Today, I'm gonna tell you about what cylinder I've ended up with to replace this and we're gonna replace it. Let's get started. This video sponsored by Simply Safe. You likely saw on the episode where I actually bent the cylinder, I put the price at the lower third, $1,048. Yeah, it wasn't very uh, exciting to me either. Uh, so I had heard online that there were cylinders available with a larger RAM, a larger diameter RAM. Uh, other than the one inch that was on the stock cylinder. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, the one I first ordered, I thought had the larger RAM. Didn't have any evidence uh, when I look back, but somehow I had it in my mind that it would have the larger RAM. It did not. Uh, that is this cylinder right here. I'll show you the part number here in the lower third. This cylinder is the, it's a, it's a replacement part. In other words, the part number has changed from the original backhoe. Uh, but it still has a one inch ram and it is the replacement part for a 260 backhoe. So I've got my calipers here. I'll double check the ram diameter and it is one inch. So I got to looking at my 270B backhoe for the 2032-2038R. Uh, I noticed, at least I thought when I was working with it, that the lengths of the cylinders were the same. Now understand the cylinder I had was bent, so I was doing that measurements before I received the new one. And what I did was I retracted uh, it all the way back up and it, it looked to be just the same. This is the 270B replacement cylinder, part number right here as well, and I, I went ahead and bought it uh, for a couple of reasons. It has the inch and a quarter RAM, okay? Yeah, inch and a quarter. And when I look at these two cylinders side by side, they have exactly the same retracted length. Uh, if you care, that retracted length is about 20 and 5 eighths, center to center on the pins. That length is about the same on each cylinder. But I know I'm going to be running into some difficulties once I set these side by side. Uh, the 270B cylinder, you can see, sticks out just a little bit further there. And so I'm I'm not sure what I'm going to have when it's extended. So let's extend them now. I don't have any oil in these cylinders and I took these caps off so that air could get in. But it's still all I can do to extend them. And I can't be absolutely sure that I'm all the way out, but I think I am. That's as far as I can pull that one. And that's that one. What I find is that the 270B cylinder uh, it, it extracts just a little further. So center to center on these pins is about 34 inches on the 270B cylinder and 33 and 7 eighths on the 260B cylinder. Now before I go any further, I wanna tell you about a viewer friend uh, who's been working with me uh, behind the scenes here and he has found a cylinder on surplus center, uh, which is a little bit different in size. I'll put the links to those in the description. Um, it's, it's about the same on the width here. He did say he had to grind a little on the end, right up here on this end, to be able to make it fit. And it's a little bit different on the expanded and contracted length. It's a 12 inch stroke, where these are, this one, appears to have about a 13 and 7 16 stroke. This one about a 13 and an eighth stroke. Okay, so his are 12 inch cylinder, the one that he found on surplus center. But all in, after he's even had to put some adapters on to get these same thread sizes, all in, he's $170. I was tempted to buy that just to make this a complete episode and, and try that cylinder. But then I decided, well, I've already got I've already got these. I'm gonna choose one of these two cylinders uh, to put on Johnny's backhoe. I think 
I'm going to go with the 270B cylinder and see how that works. What I believe is going to happen is that when I extract this cylinder, it's going to go out just a little bit further, so when the bucket is closed up against my thumb, it's going to, it's going to push a little bit harder. So I'm a little nervous that, that it might bind there, um, but that's what we're going to do as far as putting it on. So hope you understand we got three choices, the 270B cylinder, the 260B cylinder, and my friend Bruce's uh, cylinder from Surplus Center is only $170 with the adapter fittings to make this work. Now while these two cylinders look <laughs> almost identical, in fact this one has a larger ram, you'd say, well this is a, this is a little better cylinder. There's the same, same OD on the, on, on the cylinder, um, it's just a bigger ram on this one and a little bit different stroke. The 260B cylinder is $1,048, the 270B cylinder is $648. So much for consistent pricing there. Uh, and that may change by the time you watch this episode. In fact, it likely will. I talked uh, to the folks at greenpartstore.com and they said these prices are, you know, uh, jumping all over the place, mostly up right now with the, the steel prices, as you know. So it's entirely possible that they had raised the price on the 260B one and just hadn't yet raised it on the 270B. I don't know but check the prices on these. I'm gonna put links to both of them in the description. You can get them at greenpartstore.com. Use coupon code TTWD for free shipping. Yeah, it'll help a little bit, but these are expensive. I think the easiest thing for me to do is just to break this fitting loose right here, right next to the, the cylinder here in each place. And I'll get all that done before I remove the pins. I think, I think that's the easiest, that way it's kinda, it, It'll hold itself for me. I won't have to be holding the cylinder. Now mine's going to have a lot more plumbing here than a lot because I've got that hydraulic thumb. And it's plumbed into the bucket cylinder. A little T here. I think there's a, a restrictor on one of them so that the, it, it puts a priority on the proper one at the proper time. I was worried about that dripping, but it didn't drip much. While I'm here, I have to take out this little adapter to put into the new cylinder. There is a replacement RAM available, and I either have a, a poor memory or the price of that RAM went up significantly while I was researching. Uh, the last price I looked on this replacement RAM alone was $319 and I thought I had seen it for 170. I, I guess inflation's uh, worse than, yeah, worse than we'd like to believe it. But anyway, there is a RAM available. You can replace that. One reason I don't want to go that route is I wanted the bigger RAM. If I've been at once, yeah, I can try to be somewhat careful, uh, but I would prefer to have the larger RAM if I can make it work at all. That turned out not to leak too bad, Christy. That one, on the other hand, had a little pressure on it. Scared me. Again, it's just easier to work with these fittings while the cylinder is still attached. Um, I don't have to wrestle the cylinder that way. It's being held in place. Some folks have asked how I bent it. I believe I was hooked to a root and I had the bucket pretty well curled up tight. So in other words, this was pretty well extended and I had to hoe out a good bit and I was trying to pull against a root uh, and somehow somehow got it to where it, it bent. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, because I couldn't see this cylinder from the front side, right? So from where I was working, I couldn't tell that it had bent. Maybe I should have been able to see it, but I was up under some brush or something. All I know is the first time I noticed it was when it wouldn't retract, when it wouldn't open the bucket. So I didn't actually see it bent. So I, I can't tell you exactly what I was doing, but I do know that I was struggling with a root with the bucket almost closed here or the cylinder fully extended. We don't have any video. I had stolen the camera. Yeah, Christy was using the camera to uh, show her uh, with the grapple hauling off the extra brush or the trees. And so we just didn't have the video. By the time she came back, I was already crying. Yep. So I was looking at Facebook one day and saw that Simply Safe came out with a wireless camera. That's just what I wanted. This new wireless outdoor camera will work together with the rest of our system. So the camera is really easy to put together. 
It came with a battery that I've already charged from a USB cable that it provided. And then all I'm gonna do is take it apart, line up the little dots with those inside, slide it right in there, and then match it up together and turn it. And you heard the little beep. It's going to be ready. And it actually has a detachable magnet. And then it just attaches really. Wow, it's a strong magnet. OK. Attaches really easily. So it was easy to add this new camera using the app on my phone. I just picked the outdoor cam, and it led me through step by step. I added this camera to the flagpole so I can see cars when they come down the driveway. I feel a lot safer as we add more cameras. The zip tie worked great. I didn't have to get out any tools. The camera is set to high sensitivity with the spotlight on at night. If something were to be alerted on the camera, the interactive monitoring service will be alerted and call the police. Visit simplysafe.com slash TTWT to learn more and to get at least 30% off of your Simply Safe system. Here I am working with snap rings again. If you remember several months ago, I had some trouble with that. I forget what it even was that I was working on, but now I've got some decent snap ring pliers from Nipex or Knipex or whatever that name of that is. I think my new favorite tool company. They work much better, much stronger. I think this should just come right off. Okay, so a washer on the back side. I'm not seeing the washer up here. Now I don't want to pull that all the way out, Christy. I want it just when the cylinder comes loose. Okay. If we can hold it right there, that'd be great. Unfortunately, it may come out up here at that time. I don't right. know. I can't see. We should be close, shouldn't we? Ah, oh. I'm definitely not out far enough. I'm also not at risk of coming out there either. Okay. Oh. That's what we wanted right there. Right leave it there, leave it, leave it in there. I am. Okay. I had pushed it back down. Oh, okay, I thought you would, I thought you would come out a little bit with it. Okay. <laughs> All that uh, hose yeah. there, I didn't see that. Put that on there or was that on there? Um, I don't remember. I, I, don't, I either put it on there with the thumb or maybe it was already there to hold the hoses. I just, I don't remember. It was probably already there. Commenters can say if they have that on theirs. Here we go. Well, there goes oil on the cylinder. <laughs> I think it'll go outside for now. Notice the uh, bolt here that was holding the backhoe thumb on got dented in. That thing pushed pretty hard. Once it decided to bend, it, it, it pushed that cylinder down pretty hard. I think I can bring this cylinder right in here like this. Now you try to insert that pin. Now. Do you know where the bolt hole is? Did you pay attention to that? No. Okay. We'll find it. Actually, we'll drive it through a little bit further until I see the hole. Like that. There we go. Well, so far it looks to me like the actual replacing of the cylinder is not where the sting is. The sting has already occurred mm -hmm. at the finance committee. Might be a good time to put this back on before I do that bottom end. So this was fastened around some of those hoses. I don't think I'll tighten it up now, but I'll get it on there. So you went with the 270B cylinder, right? Yeah, this is the larger RAM cylinder. This is the 270B cylinder. There we go. Okay, you want to try to put
push that pin thing in a little bit. It may not push so easy. It may need a tap tap. Okay, we're doing good though. You, you, oh, 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 it might help to get my cylinder included, huh? Okay, easy enough. So here comes this washer. That was the only washer I had. And then this plate. Oh, there was another washer there. You know, when I use a lot of these attachments, guys, and brake stuff, it makes me feel like I don't know how to use anything at times. I'm sure you guys get that feeling every time you break something, you think, well, I'm not qualified to use the equipment, don't know what I'm doing, whatever. Well, I get that feeling too. If you're gonna use equipment, you're gonna break stuff. The benefit of buying the OEM cylinder is that you'll be broke faster. <laughs> no, the benefit of buying the OEM cylinder is you don't have to worry about will the threads line up, are the fittings gonna be the right size, the right style. Uh, there's so many different thread sizes, right? Um, so that's, that's the benefit to buying OEM. And you, know there, you, you really know there's gonna be a perfect fit. But if you can find something equivalent to replace it, there's no problem with doing that. So I'm certainly not opposed to looking to a third party if you can save a lot of money or if you can get it quicker or you know many, many different reasons. But I understand that a lot of times it's not necessarily the initial outlay of cash that, that is, uh, makes people fearful. It's more the, the fear that I get the wrong thing and I have to return it or I can't even return it. Um, it won't quite fit or won't quite function the same. So. You know, that's why the manufacturers get away with charging a little extra on their parts too. In this case, a little extra. Now these O-ring fittings don't have to be crazy tight. Uh, when you use pipe thread or NPT it's called, you have to put the uh, thread dope, thread, thread sealant, I guess it's called, on and then you have to tighten them tight because it's hard to keep them from leaking. O-ring fittings, uh, we've got two styles of O-ring fittings. We've got the O-ring boss, was what the cylinder had on it. And then we have a flat face. Uh, so that's what that adapter was for, was to adapt from the O-ring boss to the flat face. Hoses are on and tight. And now it's time to get this little rubber hose holder here so they don't get out of place. It's on. Now the question is, does it work? And does it close so tightly that I will tear it up against this thumb? So I'm gonna pick up some tools first. Folks, this is not sponsored, but I just wanna tell you that I have found these goop towels, goof rough towels with scrubbing power to be really good. Um, I know a lot of you say I should be wearing gloves. I, I know, I just don't like wearing gloves. It's harder for me to feel what's going on. I know there's some good ones, but these goop rough towels really clean me up quickly and they don't smell as bad as I would have kind of expected them to. I'll try to find a link to these and put them on my Amazon store. I, I don't even know if they're available on Amazon, but look, amazon.com slash shop slash tractor time with Tim. Again, not sponsored, I just found that I like them. Hey, let's talk for just a moment about the ramifications <laughs> of changing the size of ram. In other words, is it gonna change the behavior of this backhoe? Okay, here we go. It will take it a little while to get some oil in the cylinder and start running smoothly. I'm not worried at all about that. That was exactly the same length on the contracted side. I think I'm gonna go ahead and so now I've got the thumb uh, retracted as far as it will go. And I guess that won't hurt it.
So what we're gonna see is when I dump the bucket, we're putting oil in this end, pushing that way. It's gonna take less oil to compress the cylinder. So dump is actually gonna go faster. It's also gonna be just a little bit weaker. So pushing outward is gonna be just a little bit weaker with the bucket than what it was before. Whatever the difference in the um, square inches, uh, pushing against this uh, ram back here, that's what is gonna be less. Now, when it comes to pulling toward and actually scooping, it's gonna be identical. Because remember, the outer diameter of this cylinder is the same. So that's gonna be identical. You're not gonna see any change in speed or in power of trying to fill your bucket. It's only gonna be when you're dumping your bucket, you will have a little less power. That's the changes you're gonna see. Okay, so when I tell my finance committee about my mistake, I'm gonna spend time to tell her about how much money I saved on the fix. I'm just gonna tell her I saved $400. I'm not gonna tell her that I spent 648. I don't think that would be wise, but I'm gonna tell her I saved $400 by going with the 270 cylinder versus the 260 cylinder. If I'm correct, you bought both. Oh, yeah, I bought both. Uh, I'm gonna return the $1,000 one. One other choice you have is to replace the RAM only, but I wanted the bigger RAM. I really wanted this inch and a quarter RAM. Hopefully I won't be bending this again. Hey, this has not been fun. <laughs> Replacing it's not been bad. It's been kind of enjoyable. But the spending the money to do so is what I'm whining about. I don't even have to ask the finance committee to whine. I'm feeling that myself. Check out the links below to the different cylinders that we're talking about if you've had this issue. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.